Hey, what's up all you do-it-yourselfers? My name's Dylan, this is Dylan's DIY Workshop, and today I'm going to be showing you how I carved this little elephant right here out of cedar. I did it all by hand. The only power tool I used, which I used for one second, was a bandsaw. And I didn't even need it to finish this, but it definitely helped speed it up for that one step. But I will show you guys how I made this, how I got it to this stage right here, and I'm just overly very happy with this project. So I hope you enjoy this video. It'll be the first one that I'm actually making where I do a voiceover and just let me know what you guys think about that video style. Let's get right into it. Okay, so I took a coping saw and I started to cut the elephant's trunk out. Now what it looks like right now is where I got it from the bandsaw. So it was just a piece of square stock cedar. I drew the elephant on in one plane. I cut it out and then cut it to width so that it wasn't two inches wide like the cedar was, because it didn't need it to be two inches wide. So I went ahead and carved the rest of it by hand, so I don't know what I'm going to title this video, but definitely enjoyed cutting it all out by hand. I know that I could have done it in that other axis without the bandsaw, but it definitely did make things a heck of a lot easier with the bandsaw. So I was having trouble keeping this elephant in one spot here. You see the A clamp trying to hold his feet so that he doesn't twist and turn. I think I might have just been trying to cut too much or um, too much of an angle with the scroll saw. Or sorry, not scroll saw, coping saw. I do need to get a vise for my house. I have one in my shop, but I don't have a small one in my house. I will probably look into that. It was right here that I started to see the elephant starting to come into one 3D shape and I started to get really excited. So here I am cutting the back leg and kind of the, the butt of the elephant and it kept snapping off so I ended up just using a rasp to try to shape it all. And it was quite a small project so a rasp would do. If it's any bigger you might want some power shaping tools or to just cut it out properly trying to use the rounded side of the rasp. I don't really like that rounded side. I kind of wish that it was like that, but it was flat, but I don't have a rasp quite like that. I do have one really nice rasp, and we might see it later in this video. I don't remember whether I left it in there. So you start to see the shape of the back right there now that the saw lines aren't really in there, and the ear is starting to take shape too. I'm still getting much more excited about this. I don't think I showed the part where I cut his legs out. That was just the scroll saw too, sorry, the coping saw again. Just here using a little tiny square file to make the trunk. And this was definitely a long process. I think it took me a total of like five hours or so from start to finish on the elephant. Obviously I didn't do it all in one day, but it was about five hours worth of work. Just using a little box cutter here to just chip away at the things that the file couldn't really reach. I wouldn't even suggest using a box cutter for carving unless you really know what you're doing with carving because with a box cutter you only want to cut in a slicing motion. You don't want to try to chip pieces off like you would with a normal knife because you'll end up breaking the, the X-Acto blade or the box cutter blade and it'll end up coming back at you not favorable at all. Right there you just saw me using the gouge to try to carve out, I believe, under the ear. Now we're using a rounded chisel. I can't say anything right. It's a rounded file and I'm using it to kind of carve in the little knee bends in the elephant's legs. So I just use it back and forth, back and forth, back and forth on the edge of it. It doesn't really have teeth on it so it gives me a really smooth cut. So it's only got the teeth on top and bottom of the file but it comes to such a point that it's still pretty good at filing. Just filing away at the legs and the base, the base, the body, sorry. And it's just coming together as one, taking more and more shape. Got the other scoop shaped gouge and I'm using that to make the ears and give the ears some texture on the inside without giving it too sharp of a line. So you see that right there. Okay, I need to do something to make the toes, and I realized that, hey, that is the perfect gouge for that. Absolutely perfect. So right here, 
There we go. And then third toe. So I'm just using that in a way where I push down on it without jamming it into my hand. So be very careful if you mimic this, that you don't ram that into your hand and cut your hand. Popping on over to the razor tip wood burner here, and I've got tons of wood burning videos if you want to learn how to wood burn. I've got all kinds of tutorials, wood burning basics, wood burning sculptures, wood burning carvings, anything you need to know about wood burning, I've got a video or I can make a video for you. So I'm just wood burning in all the little details so that you can see them better when the project is finished. Yep, 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 just burning it. Okay, so right here we got the elephant, we got a little smile, added that. This is actually making me very happy to see this. It's, it's a good project. Taking a little lighter here, I use a Bic because it seems to, I don't know, the, the red part of the flame is what we're looking for. The red, whitish part. You don't want like a blue flame because we're not trying to burn this, we're just trying to char it. So I'm trying to char the ears and get a little bit of soot right in the grain of the wood. So now it's really sooty and to get the soot out I decided instead of smearing it because then it's almost impossible to get it out of the grain of the wood that you don't want it in, I used a piece of masking tape to lift it up and off because the soot on top isn't what we want. We want the soot that's made it into the grain of the wood already. So I basically just used this to pull off the soot that was on the ear that I didn't need. that done, there was still some left in the grain of the wood that I didn't really want in the grain of the wood, so I decided to take a small file and just file it back down to just regular old cedar so that the only soot was in the ears. Now I'm taking my favorite finishing oil and it's a salad bowl finish. I don't know why I like it so much. I only like clear finishes and this is just something that I use because I usually make small things. I make pipes and knives. So it works out for me because it doesn't come in a big bottle, but I don't need a lot of it necessarily. So we know that this is completely food safe and you could eat off of it. I don't know what you could be doing with an elephant sculpture, but if you ever needed to use it as a utensil, you definitely could. Okay, thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you enjoyed the voiceover. I tried something new, why not? This is the elephant. I love it so much. It's just a little tiny baby elephant and I'm so excited. This is a gift for someone special and you guys will probably see more of it in the future if you follow my vlog channel. So go check that out, Dylan Taylor. There will be a card for it at the end of this video. Click on it, link in the description, all kinds of places to find that or just type in Dylan Taylor, you'll find me. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you like projects like this and you want to see more little carvings like this, let me know in the comments down below. See you guys all next time. Peace out.